Sometimes we think that just dying is bad, but dying ain't bad, y'all. Oh. Hallelujah, dying ain't bad. And all of us one day got to die and leave here. Yes. But what are you gonna leave when you leave here? Yes. All right. 2 Corinthians 6 and 2 tells us, Behold, now is acceptable time. Yes. Behold, now is a day of your salvation. If you have not made preparation, if there's any out there today that have not made preparation for this final day, yes. hallelujah, now is the acceptable time. Reverend Eddie May Lane is right. We've got to die and leave here, no matter how much success we've had so far, avoiding, delaying, or redefining death. And that realization of our mortality seems to change us. Once you agree that now is an acceptable time, when you die becomes less important than why and where, as we seek the good death in earnest. Here is the story of one man who found what he sought. He had cancer, so he knew how he would die and approximately when. Where was his only concern. He and his family had made preparations for that with a hospice for the dying. His name was Ed Decker. His passing looked like a bad death, but it wasn't because he discovered that a big part of where is with whom. I can't catch my breath. A couple of minutes. Where well, things were a little rough or what? Why, well, uh, I think of the good things, you know. I think of uh, my son holding a trout up in, in the stream we were fishing and saying, is this the one you're trying to catch, Dad? <laughs> it's scary. It makes your heart, it hurts. Because so, if you love somebody and you realize, oh, I can't do anything for more than I'm doing. What can I do for him? And it hurts and I'm scared a little bit. What's it going to be like to be without him? Hello, Ed. Hi, Diane. How are you doing? Pretty good. Well, I think good. a good death is a death that for the patient is pain-free, or as much pain under control, I think, surrendering and being with their loved ones and having that support there from hospice, but with the family being the primary givers of care. Now, are you still doing your walks? That's what they ask me. Oh, that you have to get up? Do you exercise, Mr. Decker? Well, yes, I go to the bathroom frequently. <laughs> And I said, well, you're going to see our Judy. She died two years ago when he had heart surgery at the same time. And I said, you're going to see our little girl. And, um, and then I said, you're going to see all the little ladies you wrote poems for all through these 13 years, all these little ladies. So I said, I'm sure they're up in heaven, too, most of them. And I said, tell them not to get over anxious when they see you, because tell them Anne is coming someday soon. So you better stay on your side, ladies. Don't get too cozy with me. And I made him laugh. <laughs> so that ended the serious discussion about death. <laughs> Anything you wanted to do in your life that you haven't done yet that you really want to do? Any regrets about, I should have done this, I should have done that? Yeah. I should have said I was sorry. I should have said I was sorry. If I could go, if I could go through my teens and still uh, and be able to say I'm sorry. Oh. But it's, it's impossible. That's what I, the only thing I regret, being a smart ass. And that's it. When I didn't have to be. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're worse things. You know. Worse things than being a smart ass. <laughs> Believe me, I'm a professional smart ass, and they're worse than <laughs> So I hear. <laughs> right? 
When at last Ed Decker moved from home to hospice, he was ready. You know, do all that kind of stuff. <laughs> We'll keep a close eye on her. Take you to the rolling live tavern. Meet the famous Ed Ed Decker I've been hearing about. Oh yeah, he's pretty famous. I am sure loves him. God, everybody comes in, falls in love with him, and kisses him. Yeah. We're gonna sort of play it by ear every day. See how you're doing. Yeah, we want to make sure you're comfortable. And your sunny boy's coming by this afternoon. He's on his way home. Mm-hmm. Can you get any more trouble? So I'd ask my dear friends Probably. to pray for God to please take him home soon so he's not he's in any more pain him. or not distressed, but I don't want him hurting mentally or physically in any way. I can handle it. I know I can. Are you comfortable? Honey, I'm going to kiss you now. And I'm going to leave. I think you should go to sleep, sweetheart. Yeah, See you later, Dad. Yeah. Make good sleep. Bye, bye, Grandpa. Bye. Bye. Ed Decker died at Evergreen Hospice a few days later. He was cremated, and Ann took his ashes into the mountains and put them in his favorite trout stream. They had been married for 61 years.